Absolutely delighted now to be joined by Mark Elsesser, who, as you know, is Director of uh, Government Affairs with the uh, APS. Mark, first of all, welcome. Ah, thanks for having me, Stephen. Happy to do this uh, in you know unusual circumstances. Definitely, we'd normally be you know uh, less than six feet apart, but now we're oceans apart. But uh, government affairs, interesting uh, times. You've got a new president, new administration. What, what, what does that mean for the APS and f for you in government affairs? It might sound like a bit boring of an answer, Stephen, but I think it means we continue to work uh, to advance our policy priorities for the physics community and the scientific enterprise overall. Um, certainly with a new administration, right, there will come new opportunities uh, and, you know, we see several areas where our priorities overlap with the priorities of the Biden administration. Um, some of those have been acted on already. Um, they've extended the New START Treaty, which is a nuclear weapons treaty with Russia. Uh, they've ended a ban on diversity trainings in the federal government, and we are strongly supportive of, of both of those things. Uh, in terms of Congress, um, I think historically, you know, you can see that there's a bipartisan support for science there, and I don't think that that's changing. Um, as an example, uh, I'll just use the RISE Act. This is a bill that would authorize about $26 billion in research relief funding for the si federal science agencies. That bill was introduced last Congress uh, in a bipartisan, bicameral manner, and it's just been in reintroduced this Congress in the same way. So what are, what are your top priorities? Uh, that's a great question and, and one that uh, we had 60 plus APS members uh, engaged in just uh, a couple of weeks ago at our congressional visit day, which you know was 100% remote this year. Um, so this year, right now, we have six policy priorities. Uh, one, as always, is federal R&D budgets. I mentioned the RISE Act. We're looking for immediate research relief, as well as robust increases for the science agencies and the appropriations process. Uh, next priority really is ending sexual harassment in STEM. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we continue to work on visa and immigration issues, trying to ensure that we can continue to attract and uh, retain the best and brightest talent from around the world. Um, but not just international talent is important to us, also, also um, growing our domestic talent pipeline. And so we're looking to broaden research opportunities uh, for students, in particular those from underrepresented groups and in underserved regions. We continue to work to address the liquid helium crisis. Uh, as you probably know, our members uh, see dramatic price increases in helium year over year. And so we're working uh, to ensure that they continue to purchase helium at a discounted rate, as well as expand some helium recycling programs. And the last issue is um, looking to reduce methane emissions. So we're looking to overturn a rule change from the previous administration that ultimately eliminated some regulations on methane emissions from oil and gas industries. In the course of that answer, you mentioned your, your Capitol Hill Day, uh, which you had uh, virtually this, uh, this, this year. One of your greatest strengths at the APS, obviously, is your membership. And how can the members get involved with, with, with your work? So the easiest and quickest way for our members to get involved is through our, what we call our Action Center. And this can be ac accessed from the Policy and Advocacy tab if you go to APS.org. This Action Center provides APS members the ability to contact their members of Congress uh, via email or through a phone call, which we can directly connect you to the office or through social media. In addition to the Action Center, we also have call to action emails that are sent out by our grassroots lead. Her name's Callie Pruitt. And so we send out emails throughout the year on timely policy issues to APS members to get them to take action. And then for people who want to go a step further uh, than, you know, calls, tweets, uh, letters, uh, we strategically engage members who are in districts or states, you know, of members who are on key committees that we want to influence. And we'll do things like partner with those folks on op-eds or set up, you know, either in-person or virtual visits for them to meet with staff and discuss issues. So my, my final question uh, would be, you know, we've had changes in administration. We've obviously coming through the pandemic. What, what are you most excited about uh, for 2021 when it comes to APS and uh, APS's policy? Well, the first thing I'm most excited about is I'm hopeful that we can safely return to in-person advocacy uh, sooner rather than later. Um, I'm also excited about the level of member engagement we've seen uh, over 2020 and into 2021. Just so, uh, as a point of reference, last year we had APS members take more than 18,000 actions uh, in their interactions with Congress. And I'm really excited to see that a lot of our issues are already resonating uh, both with the administration and on Capitol Hill. Um, either through legislation that's already been introduced, uh, if you look at the RISE Act or uh, the Securing Helium for Science Act, 
or legislation that we know is going to be introduced shortly, like the um, Combating Sexual Harassment in STEM Act. Well, thanks ever so much indeed for uh, joining us today. We've really appreciated catching up with you and look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Appreciate it.